Hi, today I'm going to show you a simple way to use your eyes to control a PowerPoint presentation. But first, let's talk about a little science as to why we can do this. So, the way we can use our eyes to control a PowerPoint presentation is by reading electrical signals that are coming off of the six small muscles that control your eyes. These muscles are the superior and inferior oblique muscles, as well as the superior, inferior, lateral, and rectus eye muscles. Now, the reason this works is whenever there's a muscle movement, there's an electrical event that occurs. This electrical event, electrical event is called an action potential. And what an action potential describes is, as you can see here, I've drawn a neuron. You have dendrites, the cell body, and the axon. So when an action potential is propagated through a neuron, sodium ions rush into the cell. And what this causes is a spike in the voltage signal. Using that spike, we're able to detect peaks, which tell us that our eye has either moved to the left or to the right, and that will tell the slide whether to move forward or backwards in the presentation. Here is a block diagram of the project. The first task is to acquire the signal. This entails placing three electrodes on the user's face, which will be shown later. The signal is then fed into the instrumentation amplifier and then output to the lab jack. The LabJack is then able to take the signal and send it to LabVIEW for processing. Next, we have to filter the signal. We insert a high-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of about 10 Hz to cut out a low-frequency signal that causes the baseline to shift. This signal we are cutting out is the change of the ion concentration of your skin that is attached to the electrodes over time. This will be important for peak detection, which I will talk about shortly. At the bottom is an example of raw data and data filtered with the high-pass filter. Ignore the numbers for now. In reality, the raw data will be much noisier than this, and it is a good idea to insert a smoothing filter as well. As you can see, the raw data has an obvious slope to it where the baseline is drifting. However, the filter data has a constant baseline, which is what we want. It is also advisable that once the high-pass filter has been inserted, the moving average of the signal be subtracted out such that the baseline will always be zero. This is not shown in the data, however. Next, we need to detect the peaks of the signal. When the user looks to the right, there will be a positive peak relative to the baseline. When the user looks to the left, you will see a negative peak relative to the baseline. LabVIEW has peak detector VIs that will detect these peaks and send the peak information to a MATLAB block. After the peaks are detected and sent to MATLAB, we need to correspond them to the slides we want to display. As you can see, above each of these peaks is a number. This represents the slide count. Assuming we initialize our slide count to zero, the first peak will add one to the count since it is positive, and the third will subtract one since it is a negative peak. The slide count corresponds to the slide you wish to display as follows. A slide count of zero will be the title slide, slide count one, will be the second slide, and so on. Lastly, we display the slides. MATLAB can output a path to the correct image to LabVIEW, at which point LabVIEW will follow the path and display the image on the front panel. All right, so what we have here is our physical setup. What we have on the breadboard here is an INA-126P, which is an instrumentation amplifier. The gain is set to approximately 6 using an 82K resistor across the gain. And the voltage is 5 volts is powering the amplifier coming from this voltage source right here. So the signal comes from the muscles surrounding your eyes. So what we do is you hook up these electrodes that are on my face to the amplifier like so you would have three of these everywhere. So once the signal leaves your eyes, it comes into the differential amplifier, then enters the lab jack. The lab jack then takes the signal and feeds it into the computer, where you can do the filtering, the peak detection, and displaying the slides using a program called LabVIEW, which is the way we're doing it. If you want, you can filter the signal electronically after it's been into the differential amplifier, but for right now we're choosing to digitally filter the signal. And once you have all this done, you should be ready to control a PowerPoint.
All right, look to the right. Do it again. And go back. <laughs>